Hello, my name's John Thorne from Thorny Motorsport, and this little video is going to be talking about McLaren tuning. Now, all of our videos so far have been really about standard maintenance of cars, etc., and issues and things that people face. I very do very little about promotion, about our, our upgrades and our tuning side of it. Primarily because I think they sell themselves. I don't think we need to so go out there shouting about how great our remaps are on cars because what we find is our customers do that for us. However, a couple of things coming up I think it's worthwhile doing a separate video for, and I'm going to cover it now. Now, I couldn't decide whether to do this video for my dyno cell or for my engine building area, but seeing as I've done a few engine builds of late and various bits of videos, I thought I'd do it from our dyno cell. Now, we have a completely self-contained uh, four-wheel drive Dynodynamics dyno that we've had for several years, but it's been upgraded now, so it runs all the latest software. Now, one of the crucial things about dynoing McLarens, which, again, I'll do a whole new set of videos on these things if I can, is airflow. Okay, now we have four 37,000 cubic feet per minute fans in here. We generally only run two, we don't need to run all four. All four going is basically a wind tunnel, you can't even stand up in here. And that's one of the crucial things about dynoing all cars, is keeping them cool. Because when it's out on the open road, they obviously have a lot more airflow in the millions or billions of cubic feet per minute, depending on what speed you're going. So now how good your dyno cell is, I can't replicate out there. Now this comes down to the crucial aspects of mapping McLarens because mid rear engine, et cetera, they tend to get hot, but McLaren's cooling procedures are second to none. They really are one of the best cooled cars, especially its engine configuration out there. So they tend not to suffer from overheating. Um, but what we have found, and this is where it leads into my engine building connection, is that there are a few companies out there mapping McLarens in a shit way. Okay, I can't, I'd love to be nice and say friendly things about my ma fellow mapping, uh, remapping companies, but the bottom line here is that some of the stuff we have seen here is garbage, okay? Now, I, I thought twice about doing this video because those garbage maps are giving me about an engine a month to rebuild. Okay, I don't mind making a profit, no problem at all. And I'm quite happy to have these cars being shipped down from different companies around the world even, with mapped cars, with blown engines, because they haven't been mapped properly. However, I'd rather give a bit of advice to stop people doing it rather than take the money from the engine build side. Now, there's something very clever about mapping McLarens. I'm not going to make this video about mapping generally because there are actually universities dedicated to explaining the mapping process. And it's very complicated and frankly, on a video, it's about as dull as it gets, okay? Bottom line is that we manipulate the ECU to change configurations on a variety of parameters inside to allow the car to run more power without necessarily causing more stress on the engine, or the drivetrain for that matter. Most ECUs, or McLarens, I can get dramatic amounts of power from, huge amounts. We had nearly 880 horsepower out of our 720, the four litre, but we didn't release it because it just wasn't right. It wasn't good for the car, and it was gonna go wrong long term. So uh, from our perspective, we are quite conservative on mapping, but we tend to concentrate more on mid-range rather than peak end power. Now, the reason why I'm going in this in terms of engine side of it is that there really is only one safe way of mapping any car, and that's to make sure the air-fuel ratio of the car is maintained to the right level. Now again, there's videos about what levels to have in terms of it's a normal aspirated car or a force induction car, but their levels may all kinds of arguments where they should be. But there are general parameters that you want the car to fit in terms of air-fuel ratio, and that is crucial on mapping. And what we have seen is cars that have been mapped. And I'm talking about maps that have been put on a 300,000 pound 670 on the guy's driveway, uh, eventually coming to cause engine failures. And primarily it's rings. Rings are being blown through because of the heat issues at the top of the crown of the block, okay? You rarely get all starvation issues from mapping. It's all down to the heat. Now, engine gets hot, things start to expand and go beyond their thermal capacity to actually expand and contract. And what you have on the, ring, on the liner side for the for, for, for mapping side of it is that heat is, is changing from the block to the liner. And what's happening is a crack is appearing. Now I've got three engines back there with liners. We just did two sports series cars last week, last month. So I've had, what, seven engines that require new liners. And guess how many were mapped? All of them. There's not a single car that I have had to replace liners, sometimes with aluminium, sometimes with steel, that wasn't mapped before we got it. So that means to me that the essential the standard engine isn't really eating up liners, but if you map it badly, it will do. Now our own 570 has been mapped for two and a half years, 
Um, no problems at all. Standard liners, aluminium, no issue at all. Because we spend three days, sometimes longer, to map the car. Now this is where it comes issue. When a car comes in, there are different temperature conditions. If it's cold air, hot air, but the car's warm, car's cold, high RPM, low RPM, sustained RPM, starting, stopping, all these aspects of the car need the air fuel ratio to be maintained on a safe parameter. If you just chuck a map on a car and it's okay air fuel ratio between three and 5,000 at a certain RPM or a certain temperature, that's not the car mapped. That means that particular time in the map is okay. But then you start looking at cars that are wide open throttle at 6,000 and they're leaning out to the extent that we're gonna blow the engines. You have to make sure you map the car through entire rev range and all conditions. So if you guy turns up at your driveway and bungs a thousand pound map on your nice McLaren, I can guarantee the air fuel ratio is gonna be shit somewhere in its rev range, whether it's warm, cold, or upper or lower RPMs. Well, we map a car here, we dine the car first in the morning when it's cold air, we dine it in the afternoon when it's hot, hot air, we dine the car when it's um, obviously warmed up, but at different temperatures. And they'll run a map and change the map each time all the way through. That's why we need the car for thick end of a week. You can't just chuck a map on these cars and expect it to be okay. Well, you can, because it will come to me eventually after it's gone through a set of liners. So there's all kinds of things of mapping. You, there's hundreds of videos. I know my American colleagues have huge amounts of data on this sort of stuff. We can talk about wheel horsepower and brake horsepower and everything else there. But this is primarily simply a, I don't want to say a warning, that's bad news, but I want to give some of the alert process. McLaren engines are wonderful things. Their cooling is brilliant. They're fantastic. And you can get a lot more power from them perfectly safely. But it's not something you can simply chuck a bit of software on and expect the best. Okay, I can guarantee at some point in time in the future, your liners will break. That's simply how it's going to be. All right, so I thought I'd put this out there. Useful video to have. Um, sorry it's a bit scaremongery, but you know, I'm quite happy to build engines and make profit from you guys, but I'd rather you didn't do it or did it properly. Now, we map cars, no problems at all, and we give a 12 month warranty on the engine and drivetrain. If the mapper you come you're dealing with doesn't give you a warranty, run away screaming because all these guys I've done engines for, they've gone back to their mapping company and they've all said, nah, not me, mate, none do of you, put it back standard, take it to a dealer. Yeah? Bottom line is theft, okay, in my opinion. If you get a map on a car, make sure it's warranted. If it's not warranted, don't do it. All right, thoughts worth sharing. Um, hope it's fun, talk to you soon, cheers.